Okay. Let's make it happen. All right. Defend 37-47. You're first on the draw, but I'll go ahead and uh, get it rolling here. Tonight's show, as always, the shows can be a bit rough around the edges and the topics are never easy, but tonight we're going to be talking about Jalen Walker, who we are all aware of. I've done a couple shows on him before, and I'm always getting hammered when I suggest that he is a just he was a justifiable shoot. And we're going to be talking about Jalen Walker. And as you can see on the monitor, we're talking about Cremo. Robert, Bobby, whatever you want to go by in regards to his first name. I'm not going to really uh say his name too much because apparently he's been flagged by most of the powers that be online. In fact, just to find his photo, if you go on Google and try to try to find his photo, type his name in and actually uh, click on images, they've, de they've, they've deliberately deleted a ton of his images. Um, I can't get my damn screen straight, straight here. Uh, Gus the Bus, you're suggesting that Cremo is a liberal. Nobody's buying that. I don't think anyone's going to buy that. His dad is a committed Democrat or Republican, rather, that ran for office. Um, and the guy is on, there's photos of the guy at rallies holding up Blue Lives Matter flags, Pepe Le Pew, things. I mean, he's all over the Internet. So if the goal is to try to convince folks that this gentleman behind me is a liberal, you're probably going to fail on that. And I, I do understand you're suggesting he's a, con a, con he's a committed liberal wake up. I'm, I'm fine with you suggesting it. I'm just going to tell you it would be no different than if you saw me at a Black Lives Matter rally setting fire to stuff and folks tried to convince you that I'm MAGA, it would be a hell of a job to do that. So regardless of what you believe this, this gentleman uh, represents, the public at large is not buying that this guy is not MAGA. There's just simply too many images of him out there donning MAGA gear and attending MAGA gatherings for folks to believe that he's somehow a liberal. And I do understand the notion that any time a person that's at a Trump rally does something nefarious, they instantly become anti for a Black Lives Matter. That's fine. If that's the path you want to take, feel free to go with that. But I don't believe anyone is buying that. I don't think anyone is buying that other than perhaps... My love, my beloved audience, the audience I love talking to, MAGA. You guys, <laughs> certainly there's plenty of folks here that believe that this guy was somehow NT4 or somehow Black Lives Matter or something like that. But there is far too much visual evidence out there to get folks to believe that. So uh, all I can say is good luck on that. Can you show pics of him uh, with a? Can you show pics of him at MAGA? Yes, I can on my profile. Ah, there are several, if you look at my, the videos on my profile, I have a, a video I posted yesterday where uh, another person on TikTok went on his Facebook page, went on his page, went on YouTube, and of stuff from him that shows that he was down with MAGA. You don't have to believe it. You can discount it as whatever you want to discount it as. But the guy's wearing Trump flags, the guy's fly at a Trump rally with a Blue Lives Matter flag, et cetera, et cetera. You're not going to get people to believe this guy is a committed liberal. There's no way in the world. All right. Um, and that says this isn't going to age very well. Okay, so is this Trump's fault? If he was a Democrat, I wouldn't blame Biden. I'm not blaming Trump for it at all. I'm not blaming Trump for it at all, but I am going to laugh at folks who suggest that he's not down with MAGA. If you if you're down with Biden or Obama or Trump and you do something dumb, that doesn't mean the president is responsible for it. But when you start trying to pretend like he is not even a member of MAGA, that makes it look like your viewpoint of it is shady. Uh not true, brother, some comments. Okay. Ain't nobody blaming Trump. Come on. Yeah, I didn't I didn't suggest that this is Trump's fault, but he is MAGA. Now, the problem is just like on the liberal side of the aisle. If you keep putting photos up of Black Lives Matter members committing crimes, eventually somebody is going to blame it on the liberals. Make no mistake about it. I know I'm talking to a MAGA audience. You guys will be lying through your teeth if you did not suggest that you have never heard folks on the right blame liberals for what Black Lives Matter is doing. 
So I'm just simply suggesting that you have to be able to see both sides of a coin. If you keep having MAGA folks committing mass casualty acts like this, folks are going to blame MAGA. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying be able to see both sides of the coin. If you can blame liberals all day long for the actions of Antifa and Black Lives Matter, understand that when it's happening the other way around, particularly when the guy is being seen at rallies, they're going to blame MAGA. This, uh, out of all of the horrible things you've seen from Black Lives Matter on television, and there's no shortage of riots, you don't see many Black Lives Matter protesters at Biden rallies because nobody goes to Biden rallies. But you see all of these folks at Trump rallies. Come on, be honest with yourself. You can lie to me all day long. I'm fine with that. But if you've seen Black Lives Matter members at Biden rallies or Democratic gatherings, you would tie the two together. So I'm just simply saying, be understanding whether you agree with it or not, but realize if, if it happens in the other direction, people are going to tie those two together as well. Uh, looking in the comments, you know Chicago is extremely liberal. Uh, bone mommy, that is true. He, this did not happen in Chicago. This happened in Highland Park, Illinois. It is in Lake County. It is a different county. You do understand, no matter how liberal a city is, let's take Atlanta, for instance, very liberal. You don't have to go very far away from Atlanta to start hitting Democratic areas. Once you start getting in the suburbs and the rural areas, the affluent areas, things start turning a bit more Republican. Highland Park is a very wealthy Jewish community. It's not Chicago. It's just close to Chicago. That's why they brought up Chicago, so that you would have a reference to where it is. Highland Park is nothing like the Chicago you hear on the right wing media. All of the shootings, are, nobody's getting murdered in Highland Park. No one is standing on the corner selling crack or drugs in Highland Park. So do not view Highland Park as Chicago. It's just near it. No different than being near Detroit, you can have some very wealthy areas. Or near Los Angeles, you can have some very wealthy areas. You don't look at Watts in LA and compare it to Calabasas. Just because they happen to be a few miles apart. There's a huge difference between Island Park and Chicago. Uh, looking at the comments. The box is open, by the way. We're going to be comparing uh, this guy here. I'll just say Cremo. Don't want to say his name too much. Social media does not like hearing his name. Comparing him to Jalen Walker. Because I believe Jalen Walker, the African-American that was shot by the police in Akron, I believe he was a justifiable shoot. And it is very difficult to talk about Jalen Walker with folks who believe that his life was taken wrongfully without this guy coming up. So I decided we're going to discuss both of these folks at the same time because this gentleman was taken peacefully and obviously Jalen Walker's life was lost in a hail of gunfire. Okay, rainbow colored hair and cross dresser, MAGA, yeah. Okay, well, in regards to his crazy-ass hair color, I could give you, we've all heard of the song, um, FJB, Loza Alexander. He's the one that made that song go to number one. He is an African-American. Him and Forgiato Blow. But Loza Alexander's version of F. Joe Biden went to number one on the charts. That gentleman is African-American with tattoos all over his face, cornrows, etc. He looks like what you would call a liberal as well. So when you suggest that this guy having colored hair and things like that is a liberal, I'm going to tell you, if you looked at Loza Alexander walking down the street, you would also think he was a liberal. He looks like any like a typical rap star with tattoos all over his face. I mean, he, he's using the N-word and everything on his social media page. But he is 100% MAGA. So the notion that uh, the gentleman I just had up, which I don't know why the hell my computer just changed, but the gentleman I had up, the notion that he can't be MAGA because he has colorful hair is not true. It is simply not true. All right, looking at the comments. Put Uncle Ted Nugent on your page. He put you in your place. You ignorant fool. I don't know what the hell Thomas Vision is talking about, but I always say free speech. How will this affect LeBron's legacy? Well, LeBron did get involved, but all he that I'm aware, now you can correct me if I'm wrong, and by the way, folks, get my likes up. I almost got a thousand of you folks in here, and I, and I will be going to the box shortly. I see someone's in the box. LeBron James tweeted out 
pray for my city. Now, did he tweet something else that I missed that's in defense of Jalen Walker? If so, this isn't the first time LeBron James has gotten in on the wrong side of a controversial issue. So we'll see. But I, I, as far as LeBron James is concerned, he is the first NBA player to ever be worth a billion dollars while still playing the damn game. His legacy is secure. I mean, it, this, let's just put it like that. Regardless of how unpopular LeBron James' comments may be, his legacy is secure. I don't think anybody's going to stop doing business with LeBron or he's going to lose any advertising because he said, pray for my city, or even if he defended Jalen Walker, because most of the folks who are probably doing business with LeBron James already are on that political side of the fence anyway. But good question. All right, going to the box. Uh, this is Shantae. I, I'm you got a long name, but we'll just bring you on. Who cares what LeBron? Shantae, I, I'm you got a long name, but we'll just bring you on. Who cares what LeBron James thinks? He's a nobody. If you nobody. Okay, fair. All right, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing really good. This gentleman My behind me, are you aware of who he is? Yes, very much so. But I wanted to say this, and, and I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I am 20 minutes away from Akron, okay? Pay attention okay. to what they're y'all paying attention to what they're saying. The cop pay attention to what they're not saying. They're not saying that the gun that they found in the car was the gun that they say they fired because we all know they have to do forensic on that gun. They did not once say the gun that was in that car was the gun that was fired. Have well, have they cleared the gun that was in that car and suggested that it is not the gun that was fired? They never said it at the first press conference. They had a press conference okay. Sunday at one o'clock. No one ever said that that was for sure that that was the gun he fired. They even mentioned okay. only thing they mentioned is he had a gun in the car. And if you looked at the body cam, the clip was not next to the gun. Okay. Well, and, and I, they need to they need to express that. But the, at the at the I guess one of the questions I would ask is. Clearly on the radio, they announced that he he had fired a shot. Are you did you did you hear that part where they when they yeah, were yeah, but coming from Cleveland, it. but coming from Cleveland, that's the same thing that happened to a friend of mine named Melissa Wee. They said okay. that they this cop also claimed that he um he had a gun shot shot at him when they drove past. And they okay. found no gun in the car, and they ended up unalive, and she was shot 47 times in the face. Okay. So let's think Damn. about that. How could there be any face left? 47. Let me say this. It wasn't. Police, they parents had to have a closed casket. One of the cops jumped on top of the car and emptied his clip, loaded it again, and re-emptied his, re his clip on them. Okay, let me, let me say this. There is... There is a history, a significant history of some cops planting evidence on people. However, I have to go to this point. If we base everything on the worst cops that are in existence, how can they ever police? If the cops say we found drugs on a person and the first notion is, well, I can think of a cop over in Miami that planted drugs on somebody so I don't trust you. How could they ever effectively police? And I'm a good example of you know, they need some kind of training. At least they need to be retrained. Because, like I said, I'm from Cleveland. Tamir Rice, he's also another one that died here in Cleveland playing with a gun, not knowing that the young man was artistic. Come on but now. You're, you're when are we going to stop making you're excuses for him? You're, you're not answering my question. My question is every single person that is charged with a crime in the United States, you can point to a case where somebody else was wrongfully charged with that crime. And if you use that mindset, how can the police ever charge anybody with anything? I can always come up with a guy in Seattle got charged for a murder he didn't do. Or this person over in Miami got charged for stealing when they didn't do it. I mean, you would never be able to police based on that. I, I think you? they should. I think uh, the solution is they need to be retrained. They need to be retrained. 
Okay, you can retrain him, but I don't know if retraining. This guy is running from police at high speed. The police, regardless of what we think in regards to the Okay, if you problem, want to go that route, what about the, the guy that just shot off all them shots in Illinois? He wasn't unalive, and he clearly was shooting a gun at somebody. Why wasn't he unalive? He okay, wasn't well, running. He wasn't okay. running. He get, went, walked in the crowd. Okay, Why is it okay me, for that? Okay, let me. Let, that's a good point. Let me talk because that's why I got both of their names up. Let me ask you this: Did you see the guy in Chicago, the one you said that was not unalive? Did you see that guy get arrested? There is video footage of him being arrested. Did you see that? Yes, he was alive okay. when they arrested him. Perfect. He was now, alive. I get that. We understand that. Let me. Let me ask. I want you to. I'm gonna give you two scenarios, and you tell me the difference. When you look at the guy who got arrested in Highland Park or in Chicago, that Robert Cremo, the guy you're talking about, when they pulled him over, there were police with long guns aimed at him, rifles on every side of his car. The same thing happened with Jalen Walker. When they caught up to him, there were people with pistols aimed from every direction at his car. Notice how they acted differently. Look how Jalen responded, and look how Cremo responded to guns being pointed at them. You don't think that made he any felt difference safe. at all? He knew they weren't going to shoot him. He felt safe. He okay, felt safe so, with his own kind. So, so in other words, you're you're admitting that they acted totally different with guns pointed at them. Yes. Okay. You do. He realize, didn't fear them. He didn't you, fear them. So, so you're suggesting he didn't fear them. He acted safe around his own cat. He acted so, safe. I mean, what so, you, what else, what you wanted to say? You're su so you're suggesting that every single African American that's pulled over at gunpoint gets shot. I'm suggesting damn near everyone. Name, name I can name at least fifty. I can name <laughs> at least fifty. You can be a blind eye to it, but I can name at least fifty. And I'm sure you can too. We've been marching up and down these streets for a long time now. Come on. So, Come on. So if the cops pull, let me ask you then. Let's say you're driving home and the cops pull you over at gunpoint. Maybe they maybe you look like somebody else that's committed a crime. And all of a sudden you look up, you're in an intersection, and there's cops all around your car with guns pointed at you. What would you do in response to that if they told you to step out the car? I'm going to step out the car, but that don't mean I'm going to be able to get back in my car. Why did they need to You don't do know that? what they're going to be on when Why they tell me to step out my car. You're African-American just like he would, like he was. Why did? Why would you step out of the car if you don't believe your life is, is going to be safe? Why wouldn't you take off running just like he did? Because I don't run. I stand up for things. I don't run. I don't have time to run. So if, so if you could run real like fast, you would take off. I'm running. a woman that can stand on ground. I'm five five. I ain't running from nothing. I don't care who and what you is. Okay, let me let me give it to you a different way. You got any children? Okay. Let's say you let's say one of your children one of your children was a track star at school, capable of running really fast. And he called you on the phone and said, Mom, a bunch of cops just pulled me over at a stoplight and they all aiming guns at me, telling me to step out of the car. What would you advise your child who is capable of running very fast to do? I'm on my way. You sit in that car till I get there. That's what you okay. do. Because I'm well, coming. Maybe, maybe Jalen should have called his mom. mom. Maybe Jalen should have called his mom. <laughs> I mean, based no. on what you said, maybe, maybe Jalen should have picked up a phone. Better day and of training. You. These ignorant ass cops running around here pulling their guns on people. Us. Us, because we're the ones that get dying from cops, not the one, not the school shooters. They come out in handcuffs. Well, I'm, I'm just interested to you know when I put you in the exact same situation as Jalen or your child, the last thing you suggested was they should take off and run. In both cases, you're coming with other things they should I didn't do. I tell my son to take off and run. You absolutely wrong. I told him to sit in that car because his mama coming. That's what I said. Exactly. I never exactly. told him to run nowhere, but you making excuses for these cops. You making excuses. Them. I can't understand how can you make excuses and you see this every day. You see this every day. Like you valley. What about you valley? 
they stood outside and let that man run up in there and kill all them children. But that's okay, huh? That's okay. Because well, if it were my kind, if it were my kind, he'd have been dead up in that school. Okay. So let me ask you this. At the end of the day, when Jalen took off running, do you think he made the right decision? I think he was scared of what was going to happen. That I think he was I'm afraid. That ain't, that ain't what I'm asking you. Do you think he made the right decision? That was his decision he made. That ain't what I'm asking you. I'm asking you. You do can't you make right decisions right decision. when you're scared. You can't make decisions okay. when you're scared. You go with your instinct. Your instinct tell him to run. He went with his is instinct. It, How could you make that into an argument? Is it possible your instincts could be wrong? Everybody is they sometimes be wrong. Everybody okay. not going to be right. All right. Well, if you don't think that he made the wrong decision and he just can simply run with a bunch of I guns don't. on him. And head. I'm going to protest every day they out there. Nothing wrong with that. That's your you have a right. There's nothing wrong with you doing that. I'm just going to tell you at the end of the day, and I guess he dropped off or she dropped off, but I'm just going to tell you at the end of the day, just because you are fearful or scared of something does not excuse your actions. You can't just violate the law because you're scared. If you feel that the police pulling you over are, are unsafe or a, are, are, are of a danger to you, you can pick up the phone and dial 911 and drive at 10 miles an hour or whatever. You can do that. But you can't just take off running and jump out of the car hoping for the best. Regardless of how frightened you are, you're doing exactly what criminals do. Criminals do exactly what he did, including wearing a ski mask. So the notion that you're scared is not going to fly in court whether it's true or not. You can't just say, I'm scared. If I'm walking down the street and I see somebody I have beef with and they're walking towards me and I am scared of them, so I decide to break into your basement window and hide from them, and you come searching your house with a firearm because you've heard somebody break in, the fact that I'm scared is not going to convict you in court or save me. You can make wrong, incorrect decisions when you're scared. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, moving back to the box. Uh, I think that said something like that. Uh, he was, what is it? Why be scared if you didn't do anything? Well, the police sometimes are unfair. The police have an history of mistreating black people. So there is a possibility of being scared, even though you didn't do anything wrong. But when I'm just going to say it like this it doesn't matter if it's the police or if it's a bank robber. If you are surrounded with people pointing guns at you and they're yelling commands at you, ignoring those commands could cause you your death. Like I said, even if you're in a bank trying to cash a check, and a bank robber walks in there and he's aiming a gun at you and saying, don't move. And you decide, I'm going to move anyway because I'm scared. You could be killed. It's just as simple as that. Uh, Z I can't pronounce your name. Is Zambia, did I say? <laughs> Zombie land. Zombie land. Good afternoon. Good evening. Yeah. Have <clears throat> you been listening to the program? I have, yeah. It's a good show. Uh, Thank you. What, what am I getting wrong, though? I, I don't think you are. I mean, give you an example. Something I hear a lot is that people say that um, that they teach their young black men to be very careful around police. I grew very up. Common. I grew up in a, an area where the the population is ninety seven percent black, uh, one percent black, two percent what Asian. State? What state? Kentucky, Kentucky Eastern okay. Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, oh man! When I grew not, up, it, 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 it a lot of blacks in Eastern Kentucky. Yeah, not, not anymore. And uh, my parents always taught us: if the police pull you over, keep your hands on the steering wheel, and say yes, sir, no, sir, and try to get out of there without getting into a serious problem because they will right. beat you to death or they will shoot you. Uh, now that's when I was a kid, and I'm—I mean, you can see by my profile picture there i am white at least for the most part <laughs> this is uh you know this is common for us here right. in this country uh this is a very poor area uh, about 35 percent of the population in my county is on some kind of government assistance whether it's disability or social security or welfare and 
it, it, people are at risk here. They really are. Now, I understand that, that African Americans are at risk in a lot of places, too. A lot of that has to do with skin color. A lot of that has to do with poverty, I think. But well, let me, I don't let think me make that you can... clear. Let, let, I'll let you continue, but let me say this. Even though sure. I believe Jalen Walker was a legitimate shoe, the police have, to a great degree, earned a lot of distrust of the African-American community, whether it's you know, the police being created to return slaves to plantations, enforcing Jim Crow laws and a host of other discrimination. I'm not defending the police as angels by even you said your own parents told you they would beat your ass. So I'm not here to defend police. I'm just simply saying what Jalen Walker did is a death sentence. I mean, he was literally begging for a negative outcome. I agree with you. Um, after I was an adult, I had one career. I left that one. I was actually a deputy sheriff for three years. And I saw police officers who were, I wouldn't trust to pull me over if I was in uniform. Uh, I saw others who were really good guys. Uh, I think what people don't understand is that the police is not a single entity across the United States. There are individuals. And there are a lot of bad individuals. There are a lot of good individuals. Percentage-wise, I'm beginning to think there may be more bad than good, but yet I used to not believe that necessarily. But I taught my kids the same thing my parents taught me. If you're pulled over at night, turn your dome light on, keep your hands on the steering wheel, you know, run your window down before they get there so your hands are where they can see them, and, uh, you know, don't cause don't make waves because if you make waves, there's somebody out there that's willing to to put a bullet in you. That's just absolutely. It's sad that that's the way it is, but that is yeah. the way it is. Well, and, I've, uh, I've I understand often that. Said, I've often said in our country we are strong in America, our society in general. We are strong proponents of the Second Amendment. We favor citizens having the right to own guns, and I always say this anytime I have lives on on gun ownership is that. The owning a gun, the Second Amendment gives us insurance against personal harm because you can defend yourself or tyranny. But just like any other insurance policy, there is a premium attached to being able to be insured. And one of the premiums are, is, you know, mass casualty events, crime like in Chicago. And what you're talking about now is the police not necessarily trusting any American they pull over. They know we all have guns. So when they pull us over, we they treat us all, every single American. When they pull you over, you got to keep your hands at 10 and 2. They're touching on the back fender of your car to leave their fingerprints. All of this is done because they think you might have a gun. So all of this stuff is, a, is to, to some degree, a result of an armed populace is that nobody trusts each other. Everybody wants to carry a gun because they think the next man may have one also. All of that is just the premiums of us having the Second Amendment. Does that make any sense? It does, but it's not just guns. I mean, we were warned about things like people carrying acid in a uh, in a cup in the console, and when you walk to the window, that they could throw acid on you. It's an wow. us against them mentality, and yeah. that's taught in the training. I mean, uh, police officers are taught that. You know, it's just you, you're out there alone, you're the thin blue line, et cetera, et cetera. And it creates a, a bunker mentality almost among a lot of them. I can see. Now, so let me ask you this question. In regards to this particular case, Jalen Walker being shot an excessive amount of times, I'm not suggesting, right. at least for me, what do you think? Do you think he was a justifiable shoot? I think it was a justifiable shoot, but I don't think the number of times he was shot can be justified. And I don't think he could, it can be justified that he was shot after he fell. Okay. And I I, I would be, and I agree with that a hundred percent. I think the guy, if they had to shot him three, two or three times or so, and he lost his life, I would, I would have wrapped it up as totally justified. But like the police chief, I believe from that town over in Akron stated, they have to show justification for every round released from their firearm. And it does look like he was being shot probably after he was deceased. I think his lawyer even pointed out, you know, his lawyer said, I watched the video without it being blurred out. And I see a guy on the ground jerking as rounds are hitting him. So 
I I would be willing to entertain an argument of excessive force, but he is a justifiable shoot. Yeah, I think you're right on that. The give you an example. There's also something called sympathetic fire. Uh, if you have a number of police officers, they all have their guns out. They're all pointing them at, at the the person they've been chasing. If that person, if one person among that group fires a shot, the sound of that shot will often trigger the others to fire. It's like a yeah. chain reaction. I'd give you an example. We uh, we found a guy hiding in bushes after a fatal accident. He rear-ended a car, killed a woman, and he was uh, found to be drunk at the time. Uh, he went over the hill. He hid in the bushes. And when we found him, he would not put his hands in front of him. He kept his hands behind his back. Uh, there were, I think, eight of us around him, all with guns drawn. Mm -hmm. I was fairly new at this, and I didn't do this until I was in my 40s. I did not point my gun at him. I pointed my gun down at the ground, so if I, if he pulled at something out from behind his back, I could raise my weapon. Not, you know, I did not point it at him. Well, at the what, same what time, if he, if he had a quick draw, what if he came from behind his back with a weapon aimed directly at you? Wouldn't he have beat you to the draw? I don't think so because I had it in what's called a low ready position. Okay, I know. Okay, I'm familiar yeah. with that. All right, all right, but. The There were eight of us there. If one person right. had fired a shot, I think he would have probably been, been riddled with bullets. Yeah. But yeah. the one deputy there, I think, and I will still credit this man for saving that guy's life, he had the presence of mind to put his gun away, get out his taser, and tell the guy, I'm going to tase you. Show me your hands or I will tase you. And honestly, I think a lot of people look at this and they think there's a 50-50 chance they'll shoot me, but there's a 99% chance that they're going to lap me up with a taser. <laughs> you know, but here's the crazy thing. And I'm not saying, I don't know your the case you're talking about specifically, and I don't even know Jalen Walker's yeah. case, but here's the crazy thing I don't understand. A lot of these <laughs> folks that are doing business on the street would never ever trust a arrival or a counterpart aiming a gun at them that they wouldn't shoot. But all of a sudden, when the police do it, well, I know he ain't going to shoot me. <laughs> I don't understand that. I don't understand that either because, I mean, it's a self-preservation instinct in a lot of cases. And I knew, I knew officers who would say, and I, I, I do not agree with this. I'll say that I'll preface this and say I don't agree with it. I knew officers who would say, I don't care about anybody else. I'm going home at the end of my shift, and I'm going to make sure you go home at the end yeah. of your shift, but I don't care about anybody else, you know. That's the hell with everybody else. That, sound like the that sounds like the police down in New Baldy, Texas, probably thought like that. Right, and that's the wrong way to think. I think if you do yeah. that, you're in the wrong line of work. Uh, I think that you are... I think if you take that kind of a job, you should take it because you do want to help people, not because you want to have a power trip. So let me let me ask you this question: Since you got law enforcement experience, and I'm here, and I see a lot of folks in the comments saying this over and over again, is it possible for a LEO to shoot a to shoot a suspect in the back justifiably? I don't think so. The only case where we were told that you could was if the person had already shot other people and was still armed and was a danger to the community running into the community with a with a firearm. What if you're running and you fire a shot behind you? Then they then they're bought and paid for, I think. You know, if they okay. fire a shot. So behind, you can so you they, can be shot under some um, under some circumstances. You can let me give you another example. Yeah, if they've already been thing. shooting at people, yeah. Well, yeah, and he took a shot already, but let me give you another example of a guy who got shot in the back and he didn't shoot at anyone. In Atlanta, there was a an African-American that was drunk and he fell asleep in his car in the drive through of a Wendy's. The people in the restaurant called police because he was blocking the drive through Police showed up and he sobered up enough to fight back. He grabbed one of the police officers' tasers 
took off running from the two officers that were trying to arrest him and tried to fire the taser that he had stolen from the police over his shoulder. And they shot him in the back. Do you see that as justifiable? No, I don't. Okay. And that, that's, that's based on a real case, by the way, too. So Yes, I, um, I remember that. I remember at the time I didn't think it was justifiable because, I mean, a, a taser can be deadly. They're not. They're not a uh, non-lethal weapon. They're a less lethal weapon or less so than lethal your, weapon. So, so, so if a citizen gets in a fight with you and takes your taser and he's about and he's trying to use it on you, you're telling me you can't shoot that person? Oh, I think you can then. If, I mean, if they're in a fight with you right there, if they're some distance away and running away and just shoot it over their shoulder, I don't think that's justifiable. But if somebody's in a fight with you, yeah, because they can – uh, latch you up, paralyze you, and take your your uh, service weapon. Okay. Well, he was he was close enough to them for the taser to work. He missed, but he was. I mean, they were right on his tail. He was close enough for those prongs to have the distance. So, I mean, it wasn't like that he was shooting at them from a, you know from several yards away or something like that. He certainly was close enough that if he had aimed it right, he could have hit them. If I'm not mistaken, that at that time tasers only came with one round. Uh, okay, they they would only fire one round at a time. So once he did that, he would have had to resort to drive stunning, which you have to be under the arm reach. You have to right. actually have to contact the person with the right. Got to be physical with the taser. Okay. Right. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Well, and that does paralyze um, somebody. Okay. Well, you definitely provided an interesting perspective. Um, and I, I was hoping to get someone on here with a law enforcement background. I've had some MPs because this is like the second or third broadcast I've done in this subject. Obviously, you know, being an African-American suggesting that this guy was a justifiable shoot. I'm on the wrong side of my entire damn culture, but I get it. <laughs> I get it. I just don't believe that running from the police, I don't believe that running from anyone that's pointing a gun at you, telling you to do something is smart. I don't think it's going no, to No, that's not have a, a good, good idea. Outcome. Yeah, I don't it's, think it's going it's to have not. a good outcome. It's so. like running from a biting dog. You know? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> if you run from a biting dog, you're going to get bit. Okay, what about the idea that he, now they believe when they were chasing him, he fired around. But the chase continued, and he jumped out of the car. Clearly, it looks like he left the, left the firearm in the car. So what about the idea that people are suggesting that they shot an unarmed man? I don't think they knew he was unarmed. I think that they knew that there had been shots yeah. fired. He jumped out the passenger door and took off. I don't think they ever got a chance to, to look in the car right. and see it from the video that I've seen. Yeah, and that's the uh, that's the thing I'm also thinking is that they they heard on the radio shots fired, so you know you're chasing somebody who does not want to stop and who's already taken a shot at police, and then when you got him cornered, he continues to essentially resist, and it sounds like they also tried to tase the guy, and the taser didn't work as well. Yeah, I saw another video a few days ago where an officer tried to tase somebody who was running from him. And it was a bad, he should never have done it to begin with. The guy wasn't even breaking the law at that point. But uh, he tried to tase him when he's running and he missed and everybody was laughing. Oh, he missed. He was only 10 feet away. Those things are not that easy to hit somebody with, especially when they're moving. Yeah, and they also don't always work. I've seen videos of people right. literally pulling the prongs right out of the body. Oh, I've seen somebody break the wire like that. Uh, yeah. He had let a, a tub overflow onto the carpet in a motel. He was buck naked. <laughs> and, uh, he, he, he yanked the uh, wire loose and it hit the, it hit oh the uh, ca wet carpet and <laughs> it worked oh. the second time. Yeah, that makes for a hell of a story. Well, listen, I got to move yeah. it on. I definitely appreciate okay, yeah. talking to you. You were the call I was looking right. for. Hey, you're welcome back anytime, man. All right, thanks a lot. Good talking to you. Right, you have a good evening. You too. All right, too. moving on to moving on the program. Okay, if I can uh, do it now. Like I, said, I told the previous caller, which was a really good caller, by the way. I understand I'm on the wrong damn side of everything African American or his or minority in general. That is fine. I, on this program, I make it clear I'm all about free speech. Folks in the comments are tearing me and you in constantly. I will put you on the box. I will let you get your point across. Let me make something clear to you though. 
because I had a caller on the first time I did this who was so upset with me. The Uncle Toms, the Uncle Ruckus, say that as many many times as you want, but he was throwing around the N-word. And I'm just going to caution you, even though I would love to let you say whatever the hell you want, TikTok may ban your account. So when you're on here tearing me a new one, which I totally invite to sit, understand there is a higher authority. Even though I make you a solemn promise, I will never ban you or block you. TikTok will. Okay, going back to the box. Uh, Miss Goddess. Let's see what Miss Goddess. And like I said, <laughs> no way to respond to police to this. There just has to be. Miss Goddess, good evening. Hello, how you doing today, sir? I'm being. I'm in the trenches as usual. Where am I getting this wrong? <laughs> Tell me, Miss Goddess. <laughs> Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Show me the way, Listen. but don't lead me astray. Okay, now, okay. Well, well, you know, everybody have different opinions. Uh, I, I mean, but, but hang on one second. Let me let me say some folks in the comments are suggesting that I'm skipping people. I'm when I go in here, my order may not be the order that you're seeing. I'm not skipping anyone. I let folk, I let even some of the worst callers get on here. If you watch the broadcast, you will know. Being a liberal, talking to an audience of MAGA, which is what I prefer. I don't have to skip a damn thing. Everybody hates me in this damn form. All right, go ahead, Miss. You Goddard. fair about it because I was the second Thank one you. in line. So Thank you. So you're so you're very fair. So you know. Appreciate uh, that. This whole topic is very sensitive, as you know. Okay, so uh, it's just so many young black males and women are losing their lives because of the cop killings. So it's going to just make it just even more that sensitive of a matter. Um, okay, just on June 27th, this black male was um, bitten to death by a German shepherd and they refused to show the footage. It's just so much going on. And then like, when you look at other cases of um, you know, blacks you know, getting killed, um, Brianna Teller never had a chance. This poor young lady was asleep and never woke up. And then, I mean, I can name him. Um, what's his name? Well, Phil you can't. You know, let, me, let, me, let me interrupt you. With this. This, this, is, this is what I keep saying over and over again. I understand that there are bad cops all over America, which is why you never hear me use the bad apple statement. There are bad cops in every damn department in existence, and I don't downplay that. However, if somebody does something in Akron, it, you can't really quote something happening in Sacramento as a response to it. I mean, every every single thing that any American has ever been charged with, there is someone else out there that has been charged with that unjustifiably and the police made it up. I don't care if it's a murder or kicking someone's dog. There's somebody out there that has been charged with that that should not have been charged. So if we always bring up the wrongfully charged, the police would never be able to do their job because there's always somebody you can point to, even if you're just speeding down the highway. Well, I saw my boy get away with driving 20 over the limit last week. Why you pulling? You would never be able to do your job. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but what I'm saying to say is that it's just too many black lives being lost because of police brutality. And like, and like okay. all of them are not bad guys. Second of all, you know, nobody's talking about this young man's mental status. You know, but, you know, he was going through some things or whatever. And like, we don't know, like, like are there any footage of him shooting at the cops? Yes, like, there is. Okay. Yes, there is. There is footage of him driving down the street on a traffic camera, and you can see the flash of light come out of his car, and you can immediately hear the police on their radio. You can hear the shot, and they immediately announced during the chase, shots fired. He just took a shot out the window. So it's pretty clear that based on what the police heard, they thought a shot was fired. But let's take the okay. shot out. Of, let's okay. take the shot out of the picture. Okay. Let me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let's pretend like the shot didn't happen. When he okay. got stopped and all those pistols were aimed at him and he decided to jump out of the car and run, do you think he made the right decision? If he had pistols aimed at him and he was scared, he probably did. But but okay. what but what I'm saying to say this, uh, right? Nobody should be killed like a dog. They overkilled that young man. 
Okay. It been that much of a threat to shoot him that What if they times. had a shot him? Okay, fair enough. And I agree it was excessive. What if he had been shot twice? Based on everything we just well, told you, what if he only got leg. shot twice? Shoot him huh? in the legs twice. Bring him you down. Can't, you really, you have you ever shot on him? How is have you ever fired a weapon? Have you ever fired a weapon? Well, I mean, I would think that cops would be trained to shoot. They're not a, trained to shoot. They're not trained to shoot legs in the process of moving. They don't aim at legs. You, well, you then, look if at he didn't the, have the, a gun, then if he didn't have a gun, then chase him down, hold him down, handcuff him. If they thought the he had a gun. The gun was on the seat. It would be evident if he had a gun. If he had a gun, they, they would have saw the gun. Okay. They thought he had a gun. When you're driving they a car. Thought. That's the thing. They thought. They thought. Well, and how, and you, how can one black man be... I mean, I, I, I'm saying this to say this. If you're scared of a black man that bad, don't be a cop. Don't be a cop. Now, okay. it, it, it would have been physical. Like, not physical. You should have been able to see if that man had a gun in his hand. And the sad thing about it, the, the gun was How, on, Wait a minute. Wait the, a minute. How could you... If a, if a per, wait a minute. Hold on. If a person jumps out of their car at high speed... How do you know a gun's not in their pocket, in their waist, in their car? But when How he would have shot, all of that? but when he would have shot, if he already, if he already shot, maybe two, three times, if he was running, if he was that scared, wouldn't he would have fired at the cops, like physically fire at them? Let's make some in sense. My, in my opinion, if he was scared, he wouldn't have wore a ski mask and jumped out of a car with a bunch of guns aimed at him. He didn't. Okay. Just, let me, let me, let me say this, and I'll let you continue. Everything he did is almost the exact same thing a criminal trying to escape the law does. He's, he has a ski mask on. He's running at high speed. Okay. He takes okay. off a shot. When they're, okay. I mean, every single thing he did would lead police to think this was a fleeing felon, not a person that's scared. How many okay. folks get pulled over that are scared of the cops and jump out of the car with a ski mask on? Okay, but like I said, mentally he was going through something. And you know what? I'm going to do a comparison. Look at this guy right in Illinois yesterday. That went to a parade, and I don't know what kind of weapon that was. Pa, 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 Sound like a war zone. Sound yeah. like a war zone. Right. He is a liar. The same way Why with the that? white guy. The same way with the white guy in um, New York that kill all those white people. A liar. Every time okay. whenever somebody white kill people like that, they still a liar. They don't shoot them like, if anything, he should have been shot like a daggone dog. He should have took all them bullets like that. Well, let me ask you this He killed all them people. He, he killed seven people. Lord knows how many more is going to die. This dude okay, was let me ask you a to. question. Let me ask you a question. And it, it's obviously speculation because we don't know at the end of the day. But I just want you to give me your honest opinion. Speculation okay. on what? What I'm asking you. Hold on. Let me. What I'm about to ask you requires you to speculate because there's no way to know it didn't happen. That's why I'm saying speculation. And I'm asking the audience also. I'm going to ask I'm going to ask a question and I want you in the comments like I typically do. All I want you to type is yes or no. I'm going to ask you this, Miss Goddess. I'm asking folks in the audience. When right. Jay, when Jalen Walker running from the police, even with him firing a shot out of the car while they were chasing him, whether you believe it or not, the cops believe it. The, even with that happening, him running from the police at, at high speed, when the when the cops caught up to him and they were all aiming guns at him, yelling, get out of the car. If he had a raised his hands up and froze, yes or no, do you think the cops would have still opened fire on him? They would have still killed him. No okay. doubt. No all doubt. Right. No doubt. They because they felt threatened. They would be, oh, he had a ski mask on. Oh, he shot at us. Oh, we felt like our lives was in danger. They would have killed that man the same way they killed all the rest of the black people in the United States of America. When is this okay. going to end? But then yet, um, um, the young guy, Doolit, I think that's his name, the one that did the shootings and the people in church, he got Burger King. And then the little young guy, okay, you, listen, you the keep, other little young guy, hold on. They gave him you water. keep bringing up, you keep bringing up because other they're cases. White and don't nothing happen to them whenever you they keep, commit crime. I'm trying to, I'm crime. trying to get you to, I'm trying Period to get you to talk type. about. Hold on, crime. listen, wait a minute, Miss okay. Goddess, hold on. I'm okay. trying to get you to talk about Jalen Walker. You keep bringing up other cases. Every, and, 
Another let me let me finish. Okay, go ahead. Let me let me just say this: for every case of an African American getting pulled over with a BB gun, like Tamir Rice, he got shot in the park in twelve seconds with a BB gun. For every case you point out like that, I can come up with thousands of cases of police meeting folks with BB guns and not shooting them. You're literally using the worst of the worst to make examples, even though there are thousands of African Americans that get pulled over, put their hands up, and don't get shot. But you're you're pointing out the very few that do. I'm not saying that the people who do is you? not wrong. I'm very not saying that, but if you it's base every single if you base every single police action in America on the worst ones that took place, why we would never be able to use the police at all. I mean, there are good cops and there are bad cops. Okay. Okay. But no cop should it, it should never resort and a cop having to take somebody's life. Not okay. unless that person, not, not unless that person is like have a gun, and if they're shooting at their gun at, at the cop, yes, take them down. Take them down. But with this young man, the life was taken. He was running. He did not have the gun on him. The gun was on his seat. And they did not have it, to overkill that man. How did like the cops know animal. that? The cops didn't know that. But wouldn't they see a gun? But wouldn't if no, they if, wouldn't see a gun. If, he was if, that you, much if, of a that, danger. if the police are chasing you, let me give you a clear example. If the police are chasing you and they've already been told you don't fire the shot and you jump out of the car running, they're not going to look in the car for where the gun is at. They're not going to assume that you left a, you left a weapon behind that you've already fired at them. You're expecting the cops to give this guy the benefit of the doubt when he's doing everything not to earn that. But but he didn't shoot at the cops. That's my point. He how did do you know? Not, when he was running, how do you know? Because the gun was on the seat. He did not oppose no danger. He did not. He he was not running it. Pat, 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 pat. None of that. None of that. Those cops. So let me ask you a question. Do you think the cops did any? I mean, do you think Jalen Walker did anything wrong? Well, I mean, I can admit if he shot at the cops when he was driving, yes, that probably was wrong. And if what about the, the high speed chase? And, well, I'm just saying high, high high speed chase, and if he shot at the cops. He was wrong right there. Yes. Okay. But what I'm saying is that if the cops came up to him and if they uh, put the guns up on him or whatever, and if he ran, he probably was scared. He more likely was scared. He was he was afraid for his life. That's why he okay. ran. There's no other reason to run. A lot of black males are afraid of cops. Yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you're if you're running from the police at high speed. Taking shots at him, wearing the ski mask. There's a lot of other reasons to run other than being but he scared. Didn't, you don't look running, like a scared person, like cop, Mr. Handsome. When he was running, he did not. He did not turn around and shoot at those cops. So that's okay. what I don't I, understand. I, I, to why did they shoot him all? Why did they shoot him all that time? Like he's an animal. Here's, he here's like what I don't. Animal. Here's the. I think here's where you and I disagree. Is that he's running from the police. He shoots okay. at the police. He's wearing a ski mask. He, Only he when he shoot at out the, the police when he was running, though, Mr. Handsome. Remember, well, he, he, did, he, he did was, it yes, he did shoot at, yes, he, yes, he did shoot at the police while he was running. He shot while he was running in the car. He was but driving the car the and running away from the seat? This is what I don't understand. How, how did the gun wind up on the seat if he was shooting at him? And where was the? Gun I don't. Clip? I don't know and, that. I don't know that. I'll see, here, here's what I. See, here's what I really. Go ahead. See, this is where it's not making sense. That's makes sense out of sense. But and plus they're gonna cover it up. They're gonna they're gonna do all that they can do to save their behind. And hopefully and hopefully, how... and hopefully those cops can sleep at night. Hopefully they can sleep at night. I will just hopefully, say I hope they got a conscience. I will just say in speaking to you, and I, I mean I don't know your own your own story, but I know there's a lot of reasons for us African Americans to not trust police. Hell, I don't trust them totally all the time either. But I right, will say this: it. based on your your distrust for police is so strong, no, it almost me. would be imp no, it would almost me. be. Imp I'm, I'm, I mean, you're talking about plenty of evidence. Not you're me. bringing up Ubalde. You're bringing up white people who got away. Your because distrust for the behavior. Though, Hansel, of, hold on. Let me, let me finish. You go, can, you go, can go tell ahead. me where I'm go wrong. Ahead. Go ahead. You'll know, never, you know, I don't never okay. overtalk you. 
Okay, fair Go enough. Ahead. Your distrust for police sounds so strong that I don't see how they could ever present a legitimate case to you and get you to, to, to side with them because you're questioning every step of the way. Well, some people plan stuff. Or what happened in Ubaldi? Or look at this other guy you let go. You would never be able to, for them to be able, I mean, I guess I don't understand what value police would have in society if we simply tell them we don't trust anything you say. But what I'm saying to say this is that a lot of black males are stereotyped in a lot of different uh, states. Now, okay, I'm going to say this to say this, Mr. Handsome. I'm going to say this to say this. Where I live at, I don't have to worry about my sons. I live in a state to where my sons, my oldest son, have got pulled over probably like three, four times. And every time he gets pulled over, nothing ever happens to my son. Because it's just where I live at. And I mean, I'm going to say this. Sometimes attitude is the platitude. But my sons are very, very well-mannered. And like, I just think that sometimes cops are stereotype uh, certain do. types of black they men. Do. I think the ones that got the dress, the ones that got the gold teeth. And like, sometimes black men, they do step out of boundaries, okay? I'm not going to, I mean, I'm, no, I'm just going to say how it is. And they, 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 they do, like, you know, kind of don't listen. It goes back and forth. And, like, like they, they be disrespecting the cops a lot of times. Okay. I'm going to say that to say that. But it is some that don't. But. Let me let me ask it to you this way. Let me ask you this question. Okay, I want to ask you a question. I'm gonna ask you a question. Let me ask you the same question I asked the previous caller. If you got a call, let's say you out of town on business or something like that, you're not around, you're not in the area, and your son or daughter calls you and tells you there I got pulled over at an intersection. Maybe they suspected your child of being somebody else. The cops have me totally surrounded, everybody's aiming guns at me. They call you. Ma, right. the cops are aiming guns at me. I'm scared. Right. What should I do? Would you advise your child to jump out of the car and go run off? Honestly, I'm going to tell you how I would handle that. I'm going to tell you how I would handle that. I would say, son, you know from the time when you was little, I've always taught you to they obey the much, police. They don't have that much time. <laughs> no, no. I would, I would tell my son to just, no, no. I would tell my son, sit there and just sit it out. Sit there and just sit it out. But because, you just said, but, you just said if Jalen Walker sat there and just sat it out, though. that situation why is, is it different, different though. Why is it different? Because Jaden already knew that he fired at the cops. So then when he got stopped, I believe that he was in threat of his life. So he ran. So that situation he, is different. If my son okay. called me up, and, and, and I know, okay, first, first of all, my son's normally is not going to do nothing stupid. But then if they do, you got to just have to sit there and just deal with the consequences. It's so no your for response, running. But a so lot of black re- men run out of fear, though. Come on. Okay. But your response, you, you, you've you been using that he was scared. But then when I gave you the situation with your own child, your response changed to, well, Jalen knew he had been shooting at the cops. So, yeah, now you you went from he's scared to, yeah, he knows he don't have stuff. Up. And you're not going to try to contradict me either. Because you asked me <laughs> a scenario about my son. Right. And, I, and, and, I, and I gave you the scenario. You asked me to whether or not I would tell my okay. son to run or sit there. And I told you I would tell my son to sit there. This young man's situation was all the way different. Because okay. um, when he was driving. Because he screwed said, up. He shot at the cops. Right. And then he got out the car. He had a ski mask on, and 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 he ran. And, right. Okay. So all in all, I think you said enough. I think you so, said it perfectly. So all in all, what I'm saying is that, to regardless, it's no reason they shot ninety times. He was not an okay. animal. They overkilled okay. that young man. It was okay. just the way how it was done. That's why I said, hopefully they can sleep at night. Okay. Hopefully they I, can and sleep I agree. at night. And I, we, I'm, I'm about to move it on, but I do agree with you that the shooting was excessive. I just disagree that he didn't deserve to be shot at all. And I got folks in the comments that are suggesting that Jalen Walker did nothing wrong. He didn't do anything worthy of arrest or anything. Didn't commit a single crime. I got folks that have said that in the, in the comments several times. Did not commit a single crime. 
I don't know where else to go with that. Miss Goddess, I got to move it on. You know, well, I always love talking to you. Well, well, you know, I always get the last word. Can I get go my last it. word? Go for it, baby. Okay, so from what I've, I've been hearing, I've been hearing from like um, uh, his coach and teachers and things like that. They were saying that he was a good kid. So, but I know for a fact he lost his fiance and his father passed away on Father's Day. So, like I said, this young man was going through something. Be, he was going through be. something. I mean, it, 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 it may not justify that he was shooting, you know, shooting at the cops, had a mask on, and he ran. But again, you know, had that excessive shooting, the way how they overkilled him, the young man was afraid. He's right. not here. He's not here to give his side of the storm. No. So. Fair enough. All right. Well, I well, appreciate it. Oh. Well, thanks for having me, Mr. Handsome. <laughs> Always a good one. Always a good conversation. You know how we do it. I'll catch you on the next one. All right. You got it. Hey, bye-bye. All right. You too. All right. Tragedy, tragedy, says Harley Nancy. And by the way, folks, I do read the comments. I see folks. You don't read his comments. And no, I'm reading the comments, but I like to give my callers uh, my undivided attention as much as I can. If I, I mean, the comments are flying by. Most of the time when I get off of these, TikTok lets me know you're, you know, you got a bunch of comments coming in. It's a passionate topic. I get it. And, and most of the folks in the audience think I'm wrong. I understand that. But it's, I promise you, I'm not ignoring your comments. It's just there's a lot of comments coming in. And there's no way I can respond to the comments and take callers. It's, it's a lot going on for one guy. I don't have a screener like, you know, Sean Hannity or somebody, you know, you call in there, show the first person you get as a screener, and then there's somebody else sitting at the computer, and then you get the host. And I know this because I've been to some of those shows. I've been to Tom G uh, John Gibson and Tom Sullivan. I've actually been on some of their shows. But it's hard for me to do this all from one guy. I'm sitting in front of a computer, controlling the monitor behind me, reading your comments and entertaining callers. And I got to also be able to think how I'm going to respond to some of the shit I hear. So I'm going back to the box. All right. Uh, modern colonizer. Let's see what's enough money for me to be a policeman. I wouldn't want to be a policeman either at the, in regards to the, the level of um, forgiveness, responsibility that they're being held to. I mean, I can understand there's some badass cops out there. I'm not making no mistake about that. But when you got folks out there saying that Jalen Walker didn't even commit a crime, how the hell are you going to deal with somebody like that? Modern colonizer. Good evening. Hey, good evening. How are you? I'm doing all right, man. We've talked before on this, so I think I kind of remember where your mindset is on this, but talk to me. Uh, well, hey, I treat each case individually. Um, I, I was trying to get on earlier, but I was in a Obama phone area. so I, I, <laughs> You know those phones were started out with George W. Bush. We just never called them Bush phones, but those Obama phones started under the Bush administration. <laughs> Fair enough, man. But, uh, <laughs> so, I mean, there, there's so much to unpack here. And uh, just to start, I'm glad what you just talked about, not wanting to be a, a police officer. I, I wasn't even thinking about my thoughts on that. I saw the press conference, and, man, there's no way in the world I'd want to be a police officer when I've got my police chief and my mayor, I mean, the body's still warm. The case isn't even close to being unraveled. And they're they throwing them under the bus. They're apologizing. They're telling the yeah. kid's family, I know you raised a good boy and all this. How would you feel if you were a cop and your police chief is out there selling you out like that? Well, I'm going to say something. And I know this might not be the most popular thing to say, but these police chiefs around the country know we will burn their shit down. So at the end of the day, they're trying to do what they can to save face. And they're willing to sacrifice fellow officers to do it. It's wrong. I agree. You should give your brethren at least the... At least the common courtesy of letting the investigation for complete. But they know because they're getting pressured by the mayor, especially in some of these urban areas where the mayor is black, like Lori Lightfoot in Chicago, for instance. Her, you know, there's a lot of white police in Chicago, but the mayor is black. And if the outcry in regards to something the police did is coming from the black community, She's kind of weighing, do I support my police department or do I support my people? It's wrong all the way around. I hate to even go that way, but these guys are starting to realize they will burn our damn city down. And they're making decisions based on that rather than the actual truth. But go ahead. Yeah, I mean, 
I understand why it's happening. I just think it's it's appalling. Um, that being said, uh, you know, like I said, I treat each case individually, and um, you know, people are going to hear what they want to hear when I say what I say. Yep. Say. Yep. And you know, we've spoken many, many a time. You can you can only put on a facade so often. If if true, we've got good rapport, and I I'm here to say right now. There's cases like George Floyd where, hey, man, I stand with you. I hear you. That that guy, his constitutional rights were stripped from him on the street. They got one of the guys in jail right now. They need to get the other guys in jail, too. You know what I mean? Like, Which case are you talking about? You talking about George Floyd or are you talking about this guy? No, George Floyd. What, what, what okay. I'm just speaking okay. of cases that have made the news, you know? Um, okay. And, uh, you know, do the other officers need to go to jail for life? I don't know, but they definitely need to go to jail for first. Yeah, to me, the, to me, the George Floyd case is a lot more clear cut because George Floyd did not try to kill the police. I mean, he didn't fire a shot at him. I mean, it, it was it's a whole different story. I mean, George Floyd was resisting arrest, no doubt about it. But you got the guy on the ground, you got him subdued, and you're not even making an effort to put him in. Or he's already in cuffs. So what they should have did if George Floyd was still being combative, is to hog tie him and then pick him up and lay him on his belly in the police car or whatever. You, you don't just ride the guy like you're a surfer and he's a wave and just sit there for nine minutes. So I think right. what Derek Chauvin did is a pretty obvious case of police brutality. But what happened with Jalen Walker, I don't think it's the same. The, the, the reason I even brought it up is, you know, it's sad you have to preface every comment you make uh, on social media. But it's not that I have this blind allegiance, blue lives matter attitude. When they're wrong, they're wrong and burn them. Right. And I also bring up that case because I've always said, you know, we don't have a perfect constitution. We don't have a perfect justice system. But you know what? It's one of the best ones in the world. Uh, in comparison, you don't want to go on trial in Bangladesh. You know what I mean? And so well, I won't, I won't totally agree that it's one of the best ones in the world. I would say Amer the American justice system is great if you compare it to developing in third world countries. But if you compare our justice system to first world countries, it's not very good. Oh, fair enough. You're, you're right. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, you're generally speaking, you know, you've got a chance at your trial. If you're innocent, you got a chance. Yeah. To yeah. You don't just, you know, I, I, Certainly I know if you have money, we got a lot. Yes. that Yeah. And we got a long ways to go. But what I'm saying is, because I've, I've said that I beat this dead horse, is that you don't hold court on the street. Right. Right. And if, if you do and Judge Dredd shows up, don't get mad. And then I, <laughs> but that's a two way street, because like in George Floyd's hands uh, uh, case, he was in handcuffs. He is now under the protection of the officers. If the officers don't want me fighting back on the street, then I need to know once the cuffs are on, I'm in their custody and I'm in their yeah. safety. Right. Yeah. So all that being said, all that being said in this, in this specific case right here, I want to tell black America, whoever's listening, you guys have many, many mountains worth dying on when it comes to police brutality. And this is not one of them. This is not one of them. My you know. sentiments, exactly. That's exactly the point I've been saying is that the police have a history of treating African-Americans wrong. There is thousands of folks that have been wrongfully stopped and frisked, beat up and things like that. Do you have to pick somebody who took a shot at police, took them on a high speed chase and did all of this shit? There has got to be a better person to use to get police held accountable than this shit. I yeah. agree with that 100 percent. And, you know, whether he was shot twice or he was shot 90 times, you know, he's dead. Right. And what, what so, I mean, it, it's kind of insane to think that, like, somebody would be OK with him dying if he was only shot twice versus 90 times. But what I will say about all the shots fired, um, I was never a police officer. I, I was a combat, but I was in Iraq. And what I'll tell you is that if it was one officer, he was going to fire eight shots. So there's yeah. eight, there are eight officers on the ground. They all fired eight. That's how that math adds up. You yeah. Know, just like the, the guy who uh, you had on a couple of callers ago was talking, I'm going home at the end of the night. When I was in Iraq, hey, I'll let my commander put me up on trial. 
I don't care. But if this shot needs to be taken, it's getting taken. We'll deal with the other stuff later. You know what I mean? Judge by six. Judge by six as opposed to being carried by 12. I was just going to say, that is not yeah. just uh, a, a cute thing that people say in these careers. It's a mantra they live by, you know? Okay. And the thing is, a lot of people saying, I hope they sleep at night. You know how we sleep at night? People who've been to combat and have, have had to have, you know, take someone else's life. A police officer who's had to take someone else's life. You brought this to my floor plate. You brought this right here to me. I didn't. You know what I mean? And that's how, yeah. it, how you sleep at night. You know, what, what the, uh, another thing I want to talk about with a lot of these cases that have made the news uh, the last, you know, decade or two decades that I paid attention to. But I mean, obviously, it's probably been going on since even before I was born. Right. But what right. I want to preface is, you know, if they why do we not talk about what happened to get the police officers there? I understand there, there may have been excessive force and there may have been this, that and the other. But if you didn't do what you did, the, the, you know why I don't get the shit kicked out of me by cops? Because I don't have interactions with them. I got a yeah. bad attitude myself. Okay, I can run my mouth at the cops all day long, right? But I don't get the shit kicked out of me on the street because I don't go committing crimes. And so let's address why the cops were there in the first place, man. Yeah. Well, they don't, and, that, and that's something they don't want to talk about. And I said that earlier is that when you read the news reports and it says cop shoots unarmed black men and they don't tell you about all of the shit that led up to the point of them shooting, it's a biased report. And I hate to be... You know, I love talking to my MAGA folks and they criticize the media all the time. I try not to do that. I understand both sides of the aisle. There is media with an agenda. But this is a clear cut case of biased media. When you suggest that the cops just shot an unarmed black man and you don't tell about the high speed chase and the cops, you know, the guy firing out the window and none of these other stuff, stories about him wearing a ski mask and shit, you're playing to the sympathy of folks who look like me. You're, here's another one. They always shoot us. Damn, they don't shot another one. And you don't totally ignore the fact that he shot first, he's running at high speed, and he's committed all of these felonies, and it ultimately ended with him dying. I, yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, and, and you know, like this, this George Terry, somebody in the uh, comment section keeps on just in caps, you are white, you are white. Hey, Tim, I want to ask you, when's the last time you had the shit out of you by the cops? You're, you're you said what? When's the last time you had the shit kicked out of you by the cops? Never. But I can't. I will tell you, I have been stopped and frisked. I've been wrongfully profiled. And, and if you've been watching the broadcast, I've made it clear. Cops are not angels. I've made it clear that the the African-Americans uh, distrust of police is deeply rooted in actual bullshit. I mean, police were created to return slaves back to plantations. That was the reason we have police in this country. That's what they started with. They were used to enforce Jim Crow laws. And then there's a host of discrimination after that. So I'm not I'm not totally to the point where I just like all police are good guys. I'm just talking about this one case. What Jalen Walker did is why Jalen Walker is no longer with us. You don't have to bring up slavery and all this other shit. Jalen Walker was not an escaped slave. He was a bad guy that got shot in the process of doing bad things. But apparently I'm getting it wrong. No, you, you know, you're spot on. And, you know, uh, the, the distrust that the African-American community has for police officers, I think is 100% justified. The, it, you know, there's a lot of, you know, dichotomous thinking in America right now. It's either all the right. way, all the way no, or, that, you know, people can't think for themselves and they, they just got to be allied with a side and, and turn a blind eye to whatever doesn't go with their, their viewpoints, you know. This idea that, you know, uh, just because me and you might, you know, we agree that, you know, hey, this kid got himself shot doesn't mean we just say, hey, we don't need any police investigations on in internal affairs. No, like there's bad fucking cops out there. There are people there. There are cops right now who are in patrol cars that have the mindset of it's hard to articulate, but that could put that that should put them in prison for the rest of their life. You know what I mean? I agree they, with that. They are going out tonight looking for someone to beat the shit out yeah. of someone. And they, and they found fire. during, during a know? lot of investigations, during a lot of investigations, particularly when Obama, when Obama sent Eric Holder into Ferguson, they found a lot of racist cops saying stuff like that. But here's a comment 
that I thought was hilarious, and I figured I'd read it to you and, and the folks watching. User guy 1962 said, why not chase him until he gets too tired? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That. What if you chasing a track star? I mean, I'm a, I'm six foot six, three hundred pounds. My fat ass. I am not about to chase some dude. Put me at risk for a heart attack. <laughs> chase him until he gets too tired. Huh? Is that really what we as we have we really reduced police down to doing that? Chase him until he gets too tired. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> and, I mean, that's that that's a funny comment and response there. But I think there's some rhetoric that's uh, uh, like I heard from the last lady who was on, you you know, this. Uh, and then there were some in the comments, like, just shoot him in the leg and stuff like that. Right. What, what, I, well, what I want to do real quick. Go ahead. Important. I don't 100 percent back cops up all the way blindly, but I can understand that the position they're in. And I want to use my example from when I was in Iraq. I was there. I was in Baghdad for 15 months. Month one, man, I'm here to bring liberty to these people i'm here to you know that do my part right. Right? by month 15 guess what i hated them all i hated every single one of them and you know why because they were blowing me up for 15 months they were shooting at me with sniper rifles for 15 months this and there and when you put yourself in a cop's shoes when's the last time you called them over for a barbecue no they spend 60 70 80 hours a week going and cleaning up the scum of society and there's going to become an inherent bias when that's all your, I mean, if you're a doctor, as far as you're concerned, the whole world is sick. If you're an, if you're an accountant, as far as you're concerned, the whole world has screwed up finances. I mean, when you do something all day long for a career, yeah. you're going to develop a bias. And yeah. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm saying you have to get into the human brain. And knowing these things, when you get pulled over by the police, whether it's my White House out in the suburbs or it's a black man out in, in, you know, the inner city. You comply. You listen to what their orders are, okay? And if, if there's an injustice done, you get them in court. And you go get yourself a quick meal. You know what I mean? But you don't run from them. You don't fight them. The, the, the thing where, you know, oh, you should have just shot him in the leg. It's like, man, this dude just got shot out yesterday. And you're telling him to just shoot him in the leg or tase him or, or chase yeah. him till he like fuck. What? You know? I, I don't have a I don't have anything to say for that, but I gotta move it on, man. I I think we you and I are on the same playing field on this. I don't think I don't think we really disagree with each other at all on this, but I do appreciate it. Let me move it on, man, until we until we speak again. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Have a good night. Absolutely a pleasure. Um let's because I've been, I have been seeing the comments coming in. Let me just say this for the umpteenth time, if that is such a word, the umpteenth time. There are two trains of thought here, two different issues. One, was he a justifiable shoot? I understand a lot of you guys think not, but I think he was a justifiable shoot. The second issue is, did he deserve to be shot 60 damn times? No one is suggesting that he deserved to be lit up like that. I am making it clear, even though I think the guy was a justifiable shoot, 60 damn times is excessive. So I, I just want to point that out because that keeps coming up in the comments. 60 times, 90 shots. I understand that. I'm not defending that. And I even, I've asked a few callers, okay, who, who brought up that he was shot so many damn times. And I've asked a few callers, okay, well, if he was only shot once or twice, how would you feel? And they were, yeah, that's okay. And the point is... Most of the most of the outrage is coming from him being shot so many damn times. A lot of the folks that are pissed off with this case admit that if he was shot once or twice, they'd be okay with it. And keep in mind, being shot once can still take your life. So many folks believe that what he did would have possibly got him shot once or twice. They just don't believe it 90 times. So there are a bunch of people that are protesting this case that also believe he was a justifiable shoot, just not 60 damn times. And I am one of those people. I don't think, I think the shooting amount was excessive, but I, yeah, I don't see doing what that guy did and walking away unscathed as happening very often. Now, I, I'm getting call after call at this pointing out that the African-American community gets 
treated even worse by police. Yours truly, your humble correspondent, I agree with that. And give my damn likes up to 15,000. Y'all can make that happen, even though you may not agree with a damn thing I'm saying. This is good-ass content. 15,000 likes, damn it. Okay, I agree that what happened to the man was excessive. I'm just simply saying, if you already admit that African Americans get mistreated, the last thing you should do is what he did. If you already believe that we get stopped and frisked and mistreated for doing nothing wrong, why do something like that and expect a good outcome? Going back to the box. All right, the champ going to sit round or proud. Let me look at that again. Uh, good evening, champ. How are you? What's up, Lee? How you doing? Nothing at all. Tell me. I know I'm getting it wrong. Holler at your boy. Tell me what I'm messing up on. So, I mean, I, mean, I don't want to be, you know, everybody talk the same thing pretty much. It's, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, you know, being being raised in Harlem, New York, I, I so I lived on both sides, right? Right. Um, I've been a criminal. I've done I've done my dirt. You know, forty years old. I, I don't live that life anymore. Um, and, and it took a long time for me to uh to put myself on the other side of the fence, right? To look at um what a police officer goes through at the end of the day. Um, you know, and I, and I've you know, and I've and I've seen it because I've 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 been the one that treated them like in this way. Not take I'm not justifying uh bad police, but, but this is just hands down this man's fault. You know, I, I I watched the video. You know, here's here's a dude that that was pulled over on a traffic stop, ran from the police, right? Shot at the police. They went back to the scene, found the casings. So that's already been proven. Um, got out of the car running. The, the notion that he was because of his skin color when he's fully when he's got a full long jacket on ski mask. I mean, I couldn't tell what color he was running out of the car. I, I try to say I try to tell people these 300 foot put yourself in that position. What would you do? It's, 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 it's easy to say, you know what I mean? It's easy to say, oh, well, I would have did this and I would. But until you until your life is in that position, you don't know what you're going to do. And, and I say to myself. And it, and it sucks to say this police reform. You can't reform fear. It, that's just it's 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 it's, it's a Those nature. Cops, yeah, the, the ones who are scared of what is the public enemy used to say, fear of a black man. They shouldn't be on the damn force. The ones who took the life of what is the guy's name? The um, the guy Phil Phil Philander Castro or whatever. He was sitting in the car with his girlfriend and his baby in the back, and they asked him, yeah. "Did you have any guns in the car?" Now, in a case like that. That is an example of fear of a black man. I, I'm willing to Dead I'm wrong. willing to hear defense of that case Dead all day every day. But what Jalen did, no. Go ahead. So somebody in the comments, I because I just see they, the guy had a hoodie on. He, he had a ski mask on, clear straight ski mask. Couldn't right. See it. I right. Was, it wasn't I don't know what the fuck y'all. I, I don't know what the fuck y'all watching. Where y'all get y'all news from? Um. But I think and and and, and this is, I've always been a firm believer. I, I've always been a firm believer of this. We need to have people policing the neighborhoods that are from these neighborhoods. Yeah, I agree with that. Right, but, but let me ask you, you a question. I'll let you. I'll let you continue. But let me ask you this question: How do you get more of us to police our neighborhoods when we don't like the police to begin with? Well, then we got. Then we can't complain about it, right? <laughs> Fuck, you can't complain about it if you're not willing to get in there and do the job. I, 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 I see all these that's cops. I see run. all these cops in here. That, I see all these yeah, people in here. Is what I, that response is what I refer to as a home run. I can't say nothing else about that. Go ahead. Right. So I see all these people that are telling how the cops do their job and not one of y'all becoming cops. I couldn't be a cop because I'd, I'd be facing charges my first week because it's just I, I, I couldn't put myself in a position where I'm in the, I'm in the middle of the night chasing down a man I don't know that just shot at me. And I'm supposed to assume that he's not right. So if you watch the, I seen the video, and so he's he's running from the cops. This just this just just kills me. I look at myself when I was younger, and when I ran from the cops, and I say to myself, like man, like why are you put? Why am I putting myself in this in this motherfucking position? And I come from New York City, so we have a very diverse police force. Right. Nobody's bitching and moaning when the Puerto Rican cop kills a black guy. Nobody's bitching and moaning when when it, nobody bitches and moans about that. But it happens every day in New York City. Right. What about, um, let, me, let me stop but you. The real notion quick. That you're let, you, running... let, let me hold on. Let me stop you. Let me stop you. I'm going to let you keep going. But right, what do you say to the notion? What do you say to the notion that everybody thinks what you and I are saying in regards to this makes us sell out? So folks in the audience, for instance, are calling us coons and all of that. What do you think about something like that? 
Come to Harlem, 155th. Come tell me, call me a sellout. That's it. <laughs> Continue. It's very, Continue. It's very fun. It's very fun to talk on the on the internet. But anyways, um, so I so I give you I give you something I normally don't do, right? So I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a, I'm a ex fucked up father, right? I'm an ex drug addict. I'm an ex criminal. I'm a lot of ex bad things. And right. I decided I decided in my life that I was gonna give back to my community. And what I started doing was I started a community watch group that tracks down pedophiles. That's here nor there. Um, so I help local and federal officers, uh, stop online pedophiles that, so pretty much what I do is I play the role as a child. I come out and I meet these guys and I expose them and I give the, and I give the evidence to police. This is a two time felon from, from, from Brooklyn, New York. That used to be a, a, a piece of shit, right? So, so you have to do something for your community. You can't talk and complain and not get up and do nothing about it. That's my issue. A lot of people, everybody complains, but nobody's got the answers, so this is what I go back to where we need to start policing all communities. You can't have some kid from Long Island that's never been in these neighborhoods patrol these neighborhoods. Yeah. You can't. I agree with that. You know? I, I, I've said that several times, which is why I asked you that question. Like, we do need to, because when you see, anytime you see these cases where it's a controversial shooting, where it's an African-American, it's usually almost all white officers. And you do wonder, like, this is in a hardcore hood. This is in Akron, or this is on the south side of Chicago, or you mentioned in Harlem, or mm -hmm. you're in Watts. Why the hell is yep. the entire police force messing with this dude? All white people. None of them live in this area. But then when you look at the root of it, it's because a lot of African Americans are like, you want to be the popo? I mean, you get really ostracized by your own community if you suggest yep. you want to become a police officer. Well, yeah, I mean, I've gotten it too. You know, I've spoken out. I call myself a ghetto conservative. You know, I'm not really, I'm not into. <laughs> I don't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but what, what I'm, what I'm saying is that you know we have, we have this thing where we want to hold police accountable. We don't even hold our own selves accountable, right? We, 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 we're taught not to talk to police. We're taught not to snitch. We're taught not to do these things. But when a cop does something wrong, we're quick to jump down their throat. Yeah. Right. And, and let me and say, notion... I will say this in regards to uh, in the comments, T. S. Davis. I gave your comment, um, you, you keep typing coons over and over again. I gave your comment some precedence. We discussed your comment. If you want to come in the box and discuss it, that's fine. But at this point, typing coons over and over again is, is starting to look like spamming. I don't generally block anybody or anything. But if you want to come in the box and, and, and throw around why you think I'm a coon, I'm not going to ban you. I'll, I'll entertain your comment. But just typing the same thing over and over again begins to look like spamming. All right, let's make it happen. Continue. So, you know, and then you had the other, you know, and, and Miss Goddard, she said it, but she just didn't want to say it. She admitted. She admitted why her sons can be pulled yep. over. And yep. not, right? But she, it would seem like she was hesitant to admit that this is the reason. No, because you know why? You taught your sons right and correct. You brought them up right and correct. You taught them to yeah. respect law enforcement. That was, it's yep. very simple. That's very simple. It's not hard. I don't know why we. I don't know why we have a hard time being minorities and, and coming from these communities and, and admitting, yo, that we got some fucked up people in our neighborhoods, right? Yeah. And these cops ain't stupid. They patrol our neighborhoods because they know who's who and what's what and what's going down. They're I not have just not people. heard of one person. I, every caller I've had on here, I've asked them that question. If that was your child telling you they're afraid of police, what would you advise? Not one person said I would advise them to jump out of the car and run off. Not one no. person, because they all realize that's the wrong decision to make. <laughs> you listen to what they tell you, and this isn't and this yeah. isn't a, a, a what they say. Well, comply, don't die. Thing. No, listen. We will, you know, you do what they, you do what you're told. That's not a bad thing. You, you, you listen to law enforcement. You didn't do anything wrong. You got nothing to worry about when you. But when you jump out the car running in the middle of the night, you already like I said, you already shot at police. The taser ain't work because you had a fucking goose down coat on. The prawns ain't attached. And then you turn instead of instead of laying down on the ground, you turn a motion that 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 looks like you're going to fire. You're getting yeah. smoked. I'm smoking you. Liberal smoking you. 99% of Americans are smoking you. And between well, eight I and want... nine cops that are holding a Glock, hold on, and, and eight and nine cops that are holding a Glock that holds 12 shots, that ain't a lot of shots. It really, I could see if, if, if two or three cops shot 80 times, okay, we, we talk. it's unfortunate this kid, he made the wrong choices. I don't wish anybody death. It's horrible, the situation. Whatever he went through, I'm sorry for his family that this happened. It's, it's a tragedy. But you made, yeah. you made your motherfucking bed, and that's what happened to you, and it sucks. So, 
It so sucks. what about folks in the what about folks in the comments? Let me give you I, I asked this in the comments. If he when he got pulled over after doing all of that, and folks were there were several guys aiming guns at him, yelling, you know, let me see your hands or get out the car or don't move the car, I think is what they were yelling. I asked if he had a, at that time with all those guns aimed at him, had to put both of his hands in the air, would they have shot anyway? Every uh, and I won't say everybody, but a lot of folks no. believe that even if he had to show both of his hands, the cops would have still shot him. Do you believe I would, that? I don't believe so. No, because I, I think don't... they would have smoked him when he got out. Of, they would have smoked him as soon as he jumped out. They gave him a chance. They 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 tasted him. They screamed at him many a times. Lay down. Don't move. We're going to shoot. They continue to run after him. They hit him with the tase. The tase didn't work. They still continue to chase. You turned around. You asked for it. And, it, and it's so I think some people think that it can't happen to them. That's what I think it is. Like, it's, it's this thing that it ain't going to happen to me today. You can't be that person if you play stupid games. You win stupid prizes. You made a but, good you know, point, though. When I You made a really good point that it, for folks who believe that even if he had to put up his guns, they would have shot him. Like you said. If they were that much of a killer, the minute he jumped out of the car, they would have unloaded on him. And they did not. They, they tried to tase they him right. Smoking. So you, you made a really good point. But I think I think we also got, and I'm not going to take too much of your time, um, and I think we also got to look at, the, you know, statistics of how many, you know, how many police interactions happen yearly in the United States. We're talking uh, we're talking 800,000 to, 800, to a million yeah. police contacts happen. Uh, when you start breaking it down into... How many how many officer involved shootings there are? How many how many unarmed people? We're, we're talking single digit numbers of unjustified shootings. This yeah. it, it, you just got to look at the stats. Don't look at the media. Go take yourself look, FBI or whatever you want to check, uh, your, your local whatever, and look at the stats. This isn't a this isn't a uh, I don't I can't I just man I, I would hate to think that cops are are looking down their barrel and seeing color. I would hate to think that that that, well, that, that I, all these cops I, I are doing do, is pulling out their gun see, and I'm, saying, "Here's a black guy." Yeah, I'm, you know I'm, I'm not. I'm not in that. See, that's where I probably would disagree with you. And I do believe plenty of cops see color because I've been a victim of it. So that part, well, I no, no, no. I don't mean that. I mean, I mean, I, no. What I mean is that I'm killing this guy. I'm killing. This, I'm killing him tonight because he is. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Let me ask you a question. I want if 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 I could. Hold you for a couple because normally this is when I normally part ways. But I guess somebody that wants to speak with you, would you be willing to talk to somebody? Well, I got to get off here soon, but yeah, that's, that's, that's the problem. Okay, it it will be kept civil, but somebody with an opposing point of view. I just want to put them on. If 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 at any time you don't like it, you can drop out, and if I hear folks talking over each other, I will drop them out as well. But all right, fair enough. I'm gonna bring on I'm again because apparently. I don't normally put two folks on together, but this is a specific request, so let's see what's going on. I'm again. Hey, how you doing? All right, I'm, I'm doing, doing good. What, what are you What are you hearing? Beware about what you need to do. Now, y'all were saying that you don't believe that this man would have been shot, regardless of if he put his hands up. You think he would? You're real low. Your safe. audio's really low. Yeah. Your audio's really low. It's real. It's real low. Look, I can hear you. Go ahead. I can hear you. Yeah, now okay. you're good. Bluetooth. Sorry about that. Go ahead. But y'all said that you believe that he still would have been shot, wouldn't have been shot if he had just raised his hands. Yeah. But see, what's not, what's not hitting a lot of people's minds is the fact that currently the FBI is running counterintelligence against police departments. Because there's okay. been an ongoing influx of white supremacists joining law enforcement. Okay. Just here in Delaware, we've literally had three different cops that have been arrested due to that influx. See, <clears throat> how can I put it? You had it correct when you were talking about the media. We all are in a media bubble. We're not all seeing what the same person is seeing. Like, I don't know where y'all are located, well, but let me, for me, let me, when let me, I got the video... About, let me let me just interrupt you real quick. We're, I'm kind of trying to talk about Jalen because I understand that the FBI and things like that are dealing with corrupt police departments. But at the end of the day, the police have to be able to address black folks when the police are caught. If you if you just simply say, anytime you touch a black person, I'm going to point to a white supremacist mm -hmm. case. They can't do their job. Right. I mean, you're pointing to stuff that, in other that, parts of the country. Very, 
That is very true, but this is a nationwide epidemic. That's the thing. Okay. You can't, so you how can't just police... go, okay. How do the okay, pol- uh, police deal Chef. with Go ahead. Okay, let me, Chef, what are you, what, what are you thinking in regards to what he's saying? I mean, I'd have to look. I'd have to look into, you know, I, I'd have to look into uh, the source that where the FBI is is investigating every every police department in the country, and 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 if we pulled out three white supremacists out of the millions of cops, I guess good job. But uh, to, 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 I mean, are we saying that? Are we are we saying that these cops were white supremacists? I mean, I, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's 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 hard when you play the race card. Instead of looking at what's right and what's wrong, we always play the race card. And it's hard to play race when you're dealing with these issues because you can't get inside these cops' heads. I, 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 can't find an, I can't find an officer shooting that was racially motivated. I don't think anybody can. You know what I mean? Unless a cop was literally out there. So like a hate crime, right? Like a hate crime, you need to physically, you need to verbally See. say something that involves it being a hate crime, right? So like if I was beating on you, I would have to use a certain slur in order for that to be a hate crime. Now, if I just beat on you without using that without using that word, it's no longer a hate crime. So what I'm saying is, you we're gonna have to start proving now that these shootings are are are, 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 ra- are racially motivated, and you can't do that just because it's a white guy and a black guy. Okay, or vice you're, versa, you're going black guy and a white but guy. That, but that but that's the thing that is already recognized by the FBI. They're calling the code name that the groups that are doing it came up with was ghost skins basically ghost they skin? hide all op- ghost skins ghost skin, okay. like ghosts okay. where they literally hide their information hide their identity use certain tattoos just like in los angeles and there was a few in texas that have been caught uh i think north carolina was another one like this is something that's going on nationwide so let me ask you a question, uh, Armageddon. Do you think yes. that Jalen Walker did anything wrong? I would have to see everything fully because okay. that was like somebody in your comments stated that, yo, he fired a shot. We would have to see right. that he fired that shot. So Armageddon, that I'm going to say this. So, so let's say I, I'm going to take you for your word, right? But I'm going to look into it, uh-huh. though. Uh, about the about yeah, the, please the ghost do. thing, I I'm, got the right? I got the documents for that. <laughs> Shoot me a follow, whatever. But I, so take so just take just take what I'm saying as 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 whatever you want. Hit hit. Okay. You're pulled over, right? Mm-hmm. You're pulled over. You run from the police. A shot yeah. is fired from out of the vehicle, right? They've already they've already confirmed it on 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 camera. They went back and found the casings, right? So now you have cops that are being that are chasing you, thinking they're being shot at, right? Now you get out of the car running, right? You have a ski mm-hmm. mask on. You're running. You're being told, lay on the ground. They deploy taser. You're still running, and then you decide to turn around and draw your pistol motion. Did he do anything wrong from from point A to point B? Do you think he did anything wrong? It's all in the narrative. Like for instance. Come on, no, no, bro. no, no, no. Pay I, attention I, to what I, 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 Listen, I, I don't know you, but I love you. But he, 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 point A was he got out of that car, but you already started it. Once you, once you got out of the car, it's, you, once you start running, we're already in a scenario of, of, of you committing a crime. Not saying you should, you should die, right? So that's point A. Now you shot, now you, now you fired a shot. There goes point B. We See, can't that's, go from point that's A. That's my you know question I mean? right there. That's my question uh-huh. right there. You said, you said he fired a shot. Did you see, on video, the muzzle flag. Bro, I just, I just told you. Yes, they, they have it on video. Let me have, okay, let me, video. let me, have jump you in seen here. it? Let, okay, no, I was I'm in New, in New York City. How could I see it? How could I see it in New York City? I, I'm, not, I'm not a cop. Like, if we're gonna play that, did you yeah. see it, bro? Then we might as well just, we might as well scratch the whole thing. No, exactly. No, nah, the reason why me, I asked it. That okay. the reason why I asked is because, just like with Mike Brown, they ran one narrative. And then later changed it, and then changed it again. But the okay, and this is why, stories. and this is why I stated, and this is why I stated mm-hmm. in the beginning, we need to get off this fucking TV, and we need to, we need to allow the justice system to do their due diligence, and let and let these things come out as they unfold. Because us jumping the gun, not even this this right. man ain't even put in the coroner's office yet. I'm pretty sure, right. and we already we already know what happened. This is the problem with this country. 
We 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 we're jumping the gun. We 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 we're, we're, we're feeding right. into this to this to this to this to this narrative or whatever this entertainment you want to call it, and we're not even paying attention <laughs> to. Well, wait a minute. Let's just let it all unfold. Let's get out of our emotions. Right. Sit back, relax, enjoy the future presentation. And if these cops are found guilty, the... let them rot in hell. That's it. Throw them in all prison right, for the rest of their lives. All right, well, I got to interject. I do got to move the program on. I got other folks in the box. Okay, I want right. you guys to get a chance to speak with each other. So, um, it, by the way, both of you guys, I don't think I've talked to either one of you before, have I? No. Uh, I okay. spoke to you one time, but it was really brief. Okay. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's a pleasure having you on. Even though we don't agree, I'm probably on the same page as, as Champ, but you guys are always welcome back. But I do got to move I, it on. I appreciate you coming. I appreciate it. Okay. I appreciate it, brother. Right. Thank you, man. Much love to you, brother. All right. I think I may have stepped on somebody, but okay. I'm moving it on. Okay. Um, real quick. For some reason, my damn device here. Oh, shit. Okay. There we go. Uh, how do you call in? You go in the box down at the bottom there with the two people down there. Let me just say this. Um, in talking to the last caller, not Chen, but I'm again. Um, and the man giving his opinion. That's fine. We don't agree, but he's giving his opinion, and I do believe in free speech. But based on what he was saying, and some of my other folks, like Miss Goddess, they got on and, you know, they stated their point. I believe, particularly with the African-American community, the distrust with police is so great that nothing the police say will be taken at face value. Every single thing they say is first assumed to be a lie. So if a police says I shot somebody because the guy was trying to kill me, the first belief is that the police murdered the guy. So it becomes very difficult, which is why somebody, I think modern colonizer said, I would not even want to be a police officer because you're, you're constantly being told everything you say is a lie. And even though you do have uh, Jalen Walker on video doing a substantial amount of stuff wrong, whether you think he was scared or not, you clearly have him on video involved in a high-speed chase. You can argue about the shot all you want. Take the shot out of the picture. He's clearly involved in a high-speed chase, wearing a ski mask, jumps out against police. And after doing all of that, the first inclination is to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm not talking about whether he deserved to be shot or not. If you want to say he didn't deserve to be shot, that's fine. But you see him leading the police on a high-speed chase. You see him jump out with a ski mask and try to run from police. That is indisputable. No one is arguing that. And just based on that, the first idea is that we should give him the benefit of the doubt and not the police. So the problem is the distrust between police and African-Americans is so great that the police can't state their case. It's kind of like the once a cheater, always a cheater type mantra. There's, there's nothing they can do because you're willing to give this guy the benefit of the doubt, even though he's on video doing everything wrong. Up to and including, well, maybe he was just scared. I mean, it just I'm going to give him every out I possibly can. And if those don't work, then I'm going to bring up other bad things that cops did across the United States as a defense. Even though none of this is it over in, you know, New Jersey. Well, I'm going to bring up the fact that a cop mistreated somebody, you know, in Seattle. There's no way the police can work under an environment like that. Let me go back to the box. Uh, Suborn Powell, this is a, a lot of new, definitely bringing out some passion. I don't mind that. If folks think I'm wrong. I don't mind that either. I invite you on. Uh, Suborn, good afternoon. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How you doing? I'm doing good. What am I missing? Are you there? Uh, did I lose you? Suborn, can you hear me? You're on mute. You're, check your device. Your device shows you are on mute. You must have just muted yourself some kind of way. Okay, I'm going to have to move on. You are on mute, though, so check your device. All right, let me move, let me move the program on. For some reason, when I try to do this... Oh, shit. I, I'm trying to... <laughs> give me a second, but uh, yeah, he is on mute, and I see somebody said I'm lagging. All right. Uh, Can people please stop teaching their kids to fear the police? Shump 2243, some of that is the police themselves. The police have... The police have earned some mistrust. I'm not here to pretend like the police are angels. There are, I mean, 
Derek Chauvin is a, is an example. Every now and then you see these cases come up where you're like, yeah, that cop looks like he's wrong. There's enough of that. You want African Americans or anyone else to trust the police. I will tell you this, first of all, get rid of the thin blue line. This my the MAGA side of my audience will talk about unions all the time. How unions make hell, how unions make it difficult to fire teachers and all of that. So we admit that there are some, I got all kinds of devices going off here. We admit sometimes that unions make it hard to fire good people. We're willing to entertain that when it comes to everybody else but cops. So if you want cops to be trusted, stuff like that has to go away. But that's a whole different argument. Let me go back to the box and get my shit going. Yellow bull. Yellow bull. Yellow on and let's see what's going on. Uh, the police commit a lot of cover-ups. That is true. Yellow, good evening. Good evening to you. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well. Outstanding, outstanding. Look, I, I want to get in a little bit on this on this conversation. Um, I, I do want to preface it, uh, this conversation by saying that I try to look look at things through a clear lens. Uh, I try to do a little bit more rational thought before I jump to conclusions. Now, I'm going to okay. say that I am human. I am human, and I have experienced some things in my life that will have me lean into one side. Okay, with fair that enough. Said, okay, with that said... I'm definitely going to say that the gentleman that jumped out of the car, I'm not going to say that he was uh, absolutely absolved for any type of of any guilty of any guilt that that comes his way. Okay. Yes. He All didn't right. Fraction. He didn't fraction a law or two. Fair enough. I will give him that. I will okay. also say that by him jumping out of the car and running, I will give him that was a bad move on his behalf. I've I've seen people on here. I've heard people on here saying. Because you were scared, made you react a certain way. Well, if that's the case, if that's a, uh, the case, cops can never say I feared for my life. Okay, they can never ever make that statement again because their fear made them react in a certain way as well. All right. Now, right. I do see a lot of people saying that they he shot at the police. Okay, I will give you, I will give you, he shot at the police. That's fine. But when okay. and when, when did it ever become a death warrant, a death sentence to Flee the police. Well, it's not okay. The minute they put the lights on him, they're trying to, I guess, get his attention, get him to pull over or whatever. So everything that happened is in the totality of them trying to make contact with him, R him running from the police, him taking a shot at the police, him jumping out of his car and trying to run, trying to avoid. Okay. So all of this is in one ongoing event. Now, is okay. it a death sentence to run from police? No. But if no. you take a shot at police while you are running, that and, and a lot of folks don't consider the car chase as running. But that's exactly what a car chase is. You are running from the law, and you're taking mm -hmm. shots at them, I guess, to get them to back off. Because there's okay. no way you're going to hit anybody from a fleeing car. But you're I taking wanna... shots at them to get attention. In fact, whatever the police are capable of, even if you run and you fire a shot in the air, which is aimed at no one, you're going to escalate the situation when you fire Fair. a gun. Would you agree okay. with that? I will. I will agree with you on that. But also, okay. but also, in the same stroke, we have to be very, very cautious with the words that we use. You said that the even though that he was in a car, he was running from the police. No, he was right. evading the police in the car. Running, running involves with your feet. Let's just go ahead and keep it one hundred. Let's keep it a stack. If you run, so when somebody cops, says, you, so when somebody evading. says, lead the, when somebody says, lead the engine running, that's a, I mean, that's not feet involved. Okay, but 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 we're not we're not looking at we're not you're using it in a different kind of case now. He was not he was evading the cops by car. Okay, and he okay. also took that shot while he was in the car. He did not take a shot while he was on foot running from the police. We have to be very distinctive with that because in the court of law, in the court of law, if you brought that up, the prosecution would absolutely eat you alive. Okay, so I'm and I'm I'm not I'm not trying to be one sided. I'm just saying let's be very uh, let's be very cautious on the words that we use in this. Okay, if he was evading the police by car, and took a shot. Yes, he would get charged for that. He would get charged for uh, discharge of a firearm in a public setting, so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. But when he left the car, there was no gun in his hand, and he did not take a shot at the police 
running forward. Let's let's go ahead and make, keep let's keep it a stack now. So we cannot say that he took a shot at the police while on foot running. Okay, we can't say I, that. I, I I get what you're saying. I guess I just disagree with the semantics of it. You're separating running from the police or evading the police as a difference if you do it in the car versus on foot. If you're trying because to escape, you're trying to escape. It doesn't matter what vehicle or how you're doing. You're trying to escape. I, I give you Go that. Ahead. But you but you also you also threw in the the added part. He shot at the police while running from the cops. If I'm putting you on the stand and I show you the foot chase and I say, Mr. Mr. Liberal, what do you see right here? And you say he's running from the police. When did he take a shot? He and that's how they. But, but, but hold on. But no, 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 no. Let's go back to what you said. You said he took a shot while running from the cops. I'm, right. I'm not trying to make it so semantic, but I think like. Uh, uh, well, you don't consider law. you don't consider him in the car as running from the cops. He was trying to evade the cops by car. Yeah, when they, running from the cops and evading the cops, in my opinion, at least, are the exact okay. same thing. Okay, that's great, and I'm not going to yeah. dispute your opinion, but I'm just telling you, I, I, I work in the criminal court system. Okay, I'm just letting you know how would it, how it would be written up, how it would be presented to a jury. But that, okay. but that's that's neither here nor there. I didn't want to go off on that tangent. I just wanted to make sure that we we appreciate the words that we use to describe the scene. Okay. All right. Okay. Fair enough. You, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So for All me, right. I I did not think, and I keep hearing you say it was a justifiable shoot. It was a justifiable shoot, regardless if it was uh, uh one time or sixty times. You thought it was a justifiable shoot. You didn't agree with the amount of bullets, yeah. <clears throat> which I don't think anybody in their right mind would agree with the, the amount of bullets. I right. believe, I personally believe that it was a shoot from emotion from the cop standpoint. Because someone said in the in the in the comments that adrenaline plus testosterone is a bad mix. Okay. And don't you and, think that don't you can't you see the possibility that a jury might also sympathize for with cops that have just been shot at shooting out of emotion? The way it would be presented, yes, because nine times out of ten, the courts, you're going to already judge the cops from the court of public opinion. And well, not, in addition and, to that, in addition to that, a lot of folks do not give a damn if something bad happens to a bad man. And based on the actions of uh, Jalen Walker, regardless if you think he was shot or not, he's clearly showing that he is a bad man at that point. I mean, he's not doing anything good. He's not complying. He's shooting. He's running, putting people on the street at danger. Then he okay. jumps out of the car and continues running. A lot of folks okay. aren't going to care what happens to him. Mm, okay. Okay. I, I I see where you're going with that. I, I do yeah. see where you're going with that. I'm not, I'm not going to dispute that. In the same stroke, people are already going to lean on the cop side. So the cops are innocent until proven guilty, but it's not the same on the other side of the fence. Especially well, in the and, I, and that that's unfair. Mean. And that and that part of it is you're right about that, and that's unfair. However, I will say this: if it was me walking into a police station saying the cops beat my ass, and the cops saying no, I didn't, and they're automatically mm -hmm. siding with the cops, I would be more willing to even side with you more. However, when you got him on videotape, clearly running from the police, take the okay. shot at him. Let's pretend like the shot didn't happen. When you okay. got him on tape running from police, you got him yeah. on tape, we got him on videotape with all the cops around in the car and he's disobeying that order as well. It is okay. going to be, you, you, when you're doing all that on video, yeah, uh -huh. the cops are going to be believed over you. When you say that he's right. innocent until proven guilty, when you've shown right. that much guilt, they are going to get the cops the benefit of the doubt over you. And then let's go ahead and extend that further. At what point? Does that running away from the cop becomes a death sentence? At what point? When you when you turn back toward the cops. Man, when you turn around and when you're running away, when the cops think that you are armed, and there's no way for the cops to know he wasn't armed. When he jumps out of the car running away and he looks behind him. As far as they're concerned, you're about to draw your weapon and fire on us. You can say they're okay, wrong that is, about that. That that is a, that is a split second decision. 
That is true. Right. A split second decision. A uh, decision. Right. And normally, you only have less than point what eight seconds to make a decision to draw your weapon and fire one. I do get that. I okay. do get those reports as well. So I do understand that that one shot from whoever from whoever is at the at the vantage point is going to take that shot. But then out of out of emotion and testosterone and adrenaline, one shot equals sixty. Have you ever seen the cops fire one shot? Yes, I actually have. I actually okay. have. One shot, one and shot, I, and, and I he damn hits I, I'm max. being sarcastic. I'm being sarcastic. I have two, I but I'm just simply saying, if they think you're going to shoot them, oftentimes they fire a lot more than one shot. But right. based on what you just said, okay, one shot by the lead cop. So you, even you will be willing to potentially accept a, the lead cop based on the situation I just said, firing one shot. I got no problems with it. All right, so... That, and that's the point I'm trying to make. The biggest argument in this case is that it was excessive. Most folks believe a shot towards this guy is justified. Most folks believe what he was doing was bad enough to at least receive a round or two. They just don't think he should have got 60. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on board with that. 60 is hella excessive. Hella, hella, hella yeah. excessive. I mean, they, they shot at him 90 times. Let's just go ahead and get this right. They shot at him 90 times. 60 of them landed. OK, so right. there's 30 that's out there in the grass somewhere that missed their mark or went through. We we just we don't know. Let, let's go ahead and, and, and bring that to the point. I think I think we I think we agree. And I think everybody agrees that the, the amount of shots fired were excessive. But we yeah. all a lot of us also apparently agree that. Well, not all of us, but certainly you and I that he was worthy of being shot at. Just not so many damn times. Keep in On mind, the- one round can kill you. You don't need a, to fire but once. One that round is fair because you. because most of these cops are carrying spider rounds. They're they're praying, they're they're, they're uh, uh, packing around uh, hollow points. Yeah, and those things are, are to cause mass damage upon impact. I do well, understand well, that. Most, most citizens nowadays, hell, you're talking to somebody. I got a I got a, a check. My, my magazine is full of hollow points. Even the citizens are carrying those things now. I mean, yeah. so yeah, that ain't saying nothing. They all, everybody no, but, carries. In fact, when I went to the gun store, that's what the guy recommended I buy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I live <laughs> in Texas, and I, I live in Texas, so I don't need to tell you how I how I get down right. already. Uh, everything in everything in my house, car, and you know, underneath a few appliances, they are locked and ready to roll. I get that, but but my thing is, is that one round of a hollow point uh, projectile can do mass mass damage. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. But now you're getting, well, you six, fire, now you're getting well, shot at 90 times, 60 land. You are damn near unrecognizable once they get to you. Okay? I, I agree with all that. I agree with all that. But you're making it clear that he, even if they only shot him once or so, it would have been justified. One hollow point to the back or to the face or to the chest is all you really need. I mean, 60 times, 90 times, way more than excessive. But by you admitting that if they had a fire once, you would have understood, lets you know that even in that case, you would have understood his actions getting him killed. Because all you need is one round. The the, 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 the part that I, I that I was not clear on, because everything was so blurred, was the turnaround. Okay? So I'm going to put that on me. I did not see the, the quick turnaround or anything okay. like that. I did not see that. All right? Um so I'm going to put that on me. I didn't see the turnaround, so I didn't know that that it was a a sudden turn or anything like that. I believe, I do believe, I am going to say this through other incidences. I do believe if he would have stopped and put his hands up, I do believe he still would have got shot. Personally, in the car with his hands up. Wait, in the car? No, no, no. I'm talking about yeah, once he, he stopped he had a, when, they, when they surrounded him in the car yelling, get out, you know, don't move and things like that. Before he jumped out, if he had to put both his hands up, they would have shot him in the car is what you're saying. Probably so. The probability would be high. I, I would say so. But, <laughs> okay. Because it has now, happened before. Okay, the reason I the reason why I disagree with that is first of all, they were on body cam. And if you want to suggest that the officers would cover their body cams up, then you would never be seeing them shooting him 90 times. So the fact is it would have been on body cam with them shooting the guy with his hands in the air. And I well, don't wait, believe they would have done that. But but now you got two huh? different scenarios. You're talking about if they were surrounded the car, would they would you know, would they have shot him or anything like that? At, at a given time, you, when you're holding when you're holding your weapon chest high, 
it's going to be blocked. It will be blocked. And now you don't know okay. where the bullet is coming from. Okay. Now, if you're running after someone, you're now motion. You're in motion. You don't have time to to cover that. that I don't think the cops, like that. when it, when when the cops are wrongfully shooting somebody, because that would have definitely been a wrongful shooting. I don't think the cops are thinking, "Well, my my gun is up and it's blocking my camera." I don't think you want to take that risk with your career and your freedom. If you know this guy has both that. hands up Most in the air, don't think about it. Well, then they would be in prison, and that would that would be a much better case mm -hmm. than what Jalen Walker is dealing with now. I mean, if, if I would, if you, you just, I, I would just say this. I can say this a million times over and over again. When somebody's aiming a gun at you, I don't care if it's the police or if it's a bank robber. You do not ignore the instructions of somebody who is aiming a gun at you yelling like that. If you okay. do that, you do that at risk of dying. Okay. All right. You know what? I'm going to stand on the ground that I did not see the, the quick turnaround because I believe that uh, at the point, of him slowing down or anything like that, that they that they open fire on him. I'm good. That's that's that is where I'm going to stand on. So I'm going to eat the. You fact did that see I did them aiming see the, the gun and them yelling instructions, though, right? I didn't say it again. You did see them all aiming a gun at him in the car, yelling instructions to him, right? Yes. And what I'm telling you is by ignoring that. You can blame the police all you want, folks who are saying anyway, running is not a death sentence. I'm just going to tell you, when folks are aiming a gun at you and yelling for you to do something, not doing that can result in your death. You, your parents can argue it. it but you, you can get CNN or Ben Crump to show up. But when somebody is arguing or yelling at you to do something with a gun aimed at you, if you do not do that, you could end up dead. Does that make sense? It makes sense, but you also have to throw in the caveat that some people have the complexion for the protection. At certain okay. times, you, you, you can just sit there and have